So as promised, this is the PayPal um, invoice creation and shipping tool tutorial. Um, what you see on your screen right now is what it would look like after you do a couple of things. One, you have to log into PayPal quite naturally. But two, on your summary screen, you will see a link for create invoice. Now, the reason I didn't start on my summary screen is because your summary screen has a lot of customer information on it and you always want to protect that information. So, um, to create an invoice, as you can see here, I have my logo um, on my invoice. You can choose um, what information you put in. You can choose to put a logo or not. Um, I think PayPal also has like some stock photos that you can use. Um, but I always think branding all the way across the customer experience. So over here you see um, a frequency drop down menu. And what this works uh, good for is for people who have like subscription based um, services. Um, like I know people do boxes that they do every month or they may sell digital files and here is where you can actually set the invoice up to go out you know once a week you know month quarter so on and so forth um, here you can set a naming convention for however you want your invoices to be numbered um, this is not a big deal to me because PayPal is not my primary invoicing tool. I use Shopify. So um, I have a different numbering convention over there. But here I just let them, you know, do as they will. Um, this is self-explanatory. The invoice date. Um, a reference number is good for record keeping, especially if you are just going to use PayPal as your primary invoicing source. Um, so right there is a good thing to put like maybe a few letters of the customer's last name for here it's going to be dope you know one two three and that may be you know the name of the file that's associated with them or whatever but this may be good for you so that you can always look things up by a reference number and that'll come into play um if you ever get to use the reporting tool which is also good on paypal down here um type of goods this is really good information for record keeping purposes um, especially if you have someone where you make a sale to them and they you know dispute the sale or the claim or whatever and they say oh it was supposed to be picked up and they shipped it and you have on the invoice marked you know pick up but they have proof that you shipped it little things like that matter so for good record keeping purposes always use you know the good type email address here um, again this is Jane Doe um, and then you can carbon copy yourself or if you're sending the invoice to a team of people who need to approve it and that kind of thing you can always put um, another email address here this is where you can be as detailed or as not as you want um, for the sake of this I'm just gonna say a uh, large team. 10 at a price of $15 a piece. Um, black tea with red letters. All right. You can add a discount if you'd like. You can put in a percentage or you can change it to a dollar amount. So if you said, you know, give you $5 off. And then the shipping amount that you want to charge. Now, when you are charging shipping amounts on invoicing, you always make sure to include the cost of shipping plus the cost of the packaging because a lot of people lose money on that. Um, I always click allow customer to add a tip. I feel like if the option is there, more than likely they'll use it and it actually shows up at the very top of the invoice um, when they get it and I'll show you the preview. Here, if you are using PayPal as your primary um, source of invoicing and reporting, make sure you have terms and conditions in here 
Like if it's a custom item and you don't want them to be able to return it no matter what, you need to say so on the invoice because once they pay the invoice and the terms and conditions are on there, they accept all of that. Um, I also always add a little note over here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your business. Thank you for being a repeat customer. And then um, finally, if they have asked you to provide them with a custom design, attach a picture of a screenshot of the design because again once they pay this invoice and they look and they say all right this is what I'm accepting they can't come back and say you didn't give them what they ordered all right um, and here's a preview of what the invoice will look like all right now another thing that you can do is you can ship directly from PayPal um, now, there is a difference between the business account and the personal account. The business account has what you see here, the multi-order shipping tool. On a personal account, you can only create an invoice and ship from the actual invoice. And the difference between the two of those is huge if you're having to ship 25 packages at one time. Because with the multi-order shipping tool, you can ship all 25 of those packages at one time, as opposed to on your personal account where you would have to ship them one by one. This is um, a screenshot of what the multi-shipping order tool, multi-order shipping tool looks like. Um, any invoice that you have sent out that has shipping associated with it will show up under this ready to ship column. And then also a good thing is you can create a shipment without having an invoice associated with it in this tool. And again, this is only in the PayPal for business, not the personal PayPal. So this is one of the good things that I like about this one, because even if I take an order, you know, um, via Facebook and they send me a cash app, I can still create a shipment um, in PayPal enter all the information into PayPal so that I have a record of the transaction. So what you'll do here is you will select one of these people or all of them. You can use this to select all and then it'll apply whatever, you know, um, options to all of your invoices, which here is a screenshot of what that would look like. Um, when you click into one of the shipments, you can create these presets that allow you to say, all right, so I know I'm going to be shipping to Michigan and the packaging for Michigan is, you know, $4.95 or whatever, and you're shipping 25 packages in Michigan. You can create a preset and apply it to all 25 packages as opposed to, again, having to do them one by one in PayPal, personal PayPal. Um, the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory, service type, priority mail, again, priority mail is always going to be the most expensive as a flat rate. Um, you can choose the packaging of your choice. I personally choose poly mailers, um, and I will link you in the um, comment section for those. Um, always, 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 no matter what, select tracking. Because I think the biggest gimmick is, oh, it got lost in the mail. So when you have tracking information, you can make sure that your packages are getting to where they're supposed to be. And if it's something that is high value, I would opt to pay the extra for the signature confirmation, especially if it's a custom item that took a really long time to create because you don't want to end up with one of those, it got lost in the mail situations um, with that. So after you choose all of your options here, you will click to calculate your shipping cost, which is a screenshot here. Um, the good thing about this is you can use your PayPal balance to pay for your shipping label. And what's great about that is if you charge the correct amount of shipping on the invoice, plus about 10%, once they pay the invoice via PayPal, the money is already in your PayPal account. And you can choose to use your PayPal balance to pay it. So you don't have to worry about using your bank card or, 
you know, going to the post office and that kind of thing. And then you select your printer. Again, you don't need a label printer unless that's just something you want to do. I use just a regular inkjet printer and packing tape. Another good thing to make sure that you pay attention to is this mailing date box. Because once you click pay, it's going to notify the customer that the item has shipped. So you don't want to, you know, be one day creating shipping labels for 30 packages that you haven't even started on and forget to change the mailing date because all of your customers are going to get shipping notifications and then wonder why in three to five business days or whatever it is that you promise their package hasn't moved. So be very careful with your mailing date box. And then last but not least, you will, um, this is also a screenshot, um, go to print your labels. You can print them all at once, again, two or 200, or you can choose to print one label at a time. So say, for instance, you created all your labels, but you want to print them one at a time so you can keep track of your orders. I do that sometimes. So you can just go to print them one by one if you so choose to. Another good thing about this uh, shipping tool that I love is the tracking ID column. If you click into your shipping tool via the tools menu, you're going to be able to click an active link into every shipment that you've made and see real-time tracking information. So you're not going to have to go to the post office website and you know copy and paste the, the uh, tracking number and try to figure out where the package is. It's all right here in the same place. So I hope this was informative and I hope it answered um, some or most, if not all, of your questions. If you have more questions, just let me know.